Hello, my name is Dr. Don Buford. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and regenerative medicine doctor based in Dallas, Texas. I'm also the director of the Dallas PRP and Stem Cell Institute. This brief presentation is meant as an overview of current FDA regulations of autologous bone marrow and bone marrow concentrate as it's used in regenerative medicine. I want to be very clear this is not an FDA sponsored lecture. Uh, this is not an FDA approved lecture. It's not approved uh, by the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, but it is based directly on their most recent final guidance documents that were published initially in November 2017. My disclosures, I'm a consultant for ConMed Limitech, for Selling Biosciences, and for Trice Medical. I am on the board or a director of OrthoTalk Inc., uh, the Interventional Orthopedics Foundation, and the Biologic Orthopedics Journal Association. I receive no salary from any of these responsibilities, and any reimbursement that I do receive is publicly disclosed per current legal regulations. My income comes from my clinical orthopedic surgery practice and my clinical regenerative medicine practice. The document that I will be referring to throughout this talk is located at the following link for your reference. Uh, this is a document that was first published in November 2017 with some revisions in December of 2017. And at the bottom of this slide, there's also a phone number to the Cyber Office of Communication, Outreach, and Development if you have additional questions about these uh, guidance documents. All quotes and screen captures in this presentation are directly from this FDA document. I will try and be very clear where there's opinion involved or uh, things that are not direct quotes uh, from the FDA document. One additional note is that the document that was published in November from the FDA was noted by the FDA to supersede their prior documents on HCTP minimal manipulation and homologous use. So the first question is, is bone marrow or platelet-rich plasma, abbreviated as PRP, are those two uh, items even regulated as human cells and tissue products? If you look at the quote from the FDA, whole blood or blood components or blood derivative products are not subject to FDA regulation as HCTP. Now this doesn't mean that PRP is not regulated, it just means that PRP is not regulated as a human cell tissue or cell and tissue based product by the FDA. In a similar fashion, under item number four, you can see that minimally manipulated bone marrow for homologous use and not combined with another article uh, with the exceptions noted in parentheses uh, is not considered an HCTP by the FDA. So the answer is no, PRP is not regulated by the FDA in this fashion, and neither is bone marrow regulated by the FDA as an HCTP as long as the four parenthetical criteria are met um, as stated in their document. So what are these four criteria? And let's go into more detail into what allows us to uh, use bone marrow without FDA regulation. Number one, it has to be autologous bone marrow. Number two, it has to be minimally manipulated. Number three, it has to be for homologous use. And then number four is where the FDA states it can only be combined with water, crystalloids, or a sterilizing, preserving, or storage agent that doesn't raise new clinical safety concerns. So I want to go into these four items one at a time to see if we can uh, make some common sense deductions from the FDA document. Number one, use autologous bone marrow. That's probably the easiest thing of all the uh, four criteria. Just make sure that we use autologous bone marrow. Criteria number two is where they reference minimal manipulation. And this is a, a two-step process in deciding what indeed is minimal manipulation for bone marrow. Step one is to decide which tissue type bone marrow is, structural or cellular and non-structural. And we have to make this determination because the regulations are very different for structural tissues like adipose versus non-structural or cellular tissues like bone marrow. And this distinction is not a, a medical or scientific distinction per se. This is a distinction that the FDA makes. And so we go to the FDA document for the answer. 
when we look at the FDA document, we can see that they consider bone marrow a, a non-structural or cellular tissue. So having found that information, we can now look at that pathway for regulation. So what are the minimal manipulation requirements for cellular tissues? Well, on this question, the, the FDA is very clear. You can see in the blue rectangle here that for cells or non-structural tissues, Minimal manipulation means that the processing of the HCTP does not alter the relevant biological characteristics of the cells or tissues. So per the FDA, as long as a process doesn't alter the relevant biological characteristics of the cells, then the process is compliant with minimal manipulation. If there is a process for which there is no information, so for example, if there's a brand new manufacturing process for which there's no data, no research, no, no outcomes, then the FDA by default considers that more than minimal manipulation. So new processes have to be evaluated to meet the criteria. Established processes, as long as they don't alter the relevant biological characteristics of cells, are considered uh, compliant with minimal manipulation. And as an addendum, adipose is considered a structural tissue, so we can't consider um, these issues when we're talking about adipose. There's different criteria for structural tissues to meet the minimal manipulation uh, guideline. For cells, the next question, especially if you're dealing with bone marrow concentrate, is does centrifuging alter the relevant biological characteristics of cells? And the answer to that is a resounding no. Centrifuging does not alter the relevant biological characteristics of cells, at least not the centrifuging that we do as clinicians um, at the bedside in our, in our uh, clinical practices. That is uh, an opinion. It's an opinion based on a lot of uh, FDA facts and a lot of FDA enforcement action. So the question that we must ask ourselves is, has the FDA ever stated that centrifuging bone marrow is more than minimal manipulation. Centrifuging has been around for many, many decades, and the FDA has never stated that centrifuging bone marrow makes, uh, makes that product more than minimally manipulated. Furthermore, the FDA has evaluated a clinic that was known for centrifuging bone marrow to make a, a regenerative medicine product. In that case, the FDA did not claim that centrifuging the bone marrow was the problem. The issue that the FDA had in that uh, court case was with culturing stem cells. So culturing the cells did indeed cross the threshold for more than minimal manipulation. However, in that same case, the FDA did not find that centrifuging bone marrow to make bone marrow concentrate crossed the threshold of minimal manipulation. So we have direct action in a, in a years-long court case where millions of dollars were spent, where the FDA never claimed that centrifuging bone marrow was more than minimal manipulation. Is there any other scientific evidence or common sense evidence that centrifuging does not alter the relevant characteristics of cells? And the answer is yes. There's literally hundreds if not thousands of studies published with a multitude of international researchers looking at studies where bone marrow has been concentrated. In virtually all of those studies, one or several of the following biological activity markers have been reported, uh, quantified, and peer-reviewed. Uh, these studies include things like cell viability after centrifuging, uh, plastic adherence. Uh, there have been many, many studies looking at flow cytometry results after centrifuging bone marrow. Uh, there have been many studies that have cultured uh, cells after centrifuging to demonstrate trilidians differentiation capability. And of course, there's been many studies published looking at uh, uh, CFUs per milliliter after centrifuging. All of these things demonstrating that the cells have normal biological activity after centrifuging. So every one of these studies, which are far too numerous to mention because like I said, there's been hundreds, they've all shown that centrifuging does not alter the cellular characteristics of bone marrow post-centrifuge and that these cells have normal biological activity with cell markers, differentiation capability, exosome capability, as well as all the other biological capabilities of, of healthy cells.
So we've looked at autologous bone marrow. We've looked at the minimal manipulation criteria. Number three on the list from the FDA is homologous use. So let's go back to the FDA document. What do they mean by homologous use? Homologous use, to use their words, means the repair, reconstruction, replacement, or supplementation of a recipient's cells or tissues with an HCTP that performs the same basic function or functions in the recipient as in the donor. So that begs the question of what is the normal function of bone marrow if we're using it in orthopedic applications. And the answer, based on the entire history of orthopedics, is that bone marrow is used in bone marrow regeneration. Bone marrow is active in bone healing, uh, for example, in fracture healing. Bone marrow is involved in cartilage healing. Bone marrow is involved in muscle and tendon and ligament healing. So these are all areas where we've demonstrated uh, cellular activity from the bone marrow that is involved in the regenerative or restorative process. Perhaps one of the ways that uh, could raise an issue would be if a manufacturer or clinician or provider claimed a use for bone marrow that was non-homologous. Uh, for example, using bone marrow for a central nervous system disorder. We don't really have any science showing that bone marrow derived cells are involved in central nervous system disorders. So that would make a product a, a non-homologous um, non homologous use for a product. I also want to mention that bone marrow is not bone graft. So we are not bone grafting intraarticular structures. We're not bone grafting ligaments and tendons and cartilage. So that's an important distinction. We, we, we don't really have an orthopedic history of bone grafting soft tissues. However, we do have a long history of showing that bone marrow and the cells derived um, from the bone marrow are involved in orthopedic healing. Okay, so now let's talk about the fourth criteria, which is simply that we can only combine bone marrow or bone marrow concentrate with water, crystalloids, or sterilizing, preserving, or storage agents that don't raise additional clinical safety concerns. So to meet that criteria, it's relatively simple. Don't combine your bone marrow or bone marrow concentrate with anything not on that list. And if you do that and meet the other criteria that we've discussed, then not only are you compliant with the FDA regs, you have a HCT product, or let me correct that, you don't have an HCTP regulated product because if you meet these four criteria, your bone marrow or bone marrow concentrate is not regulated by the FDA as an HCT product. Here's a letter uh, to one of our colleagues in the regenerative medicine space. Uh, this is a letter from the FDA and the reason um, why this letter was sent and responded to was because after the FDA regulations came out in November, uh, they didn't specifically comment on uh, some of the questions regarding minimal manipulation. And so uh, the question was asked, is bone marrow now regulated by the FDA or not? Um, you know, has that changed? And the answer underlined in red was the same answer that was in the regs, which is that if you meet those four criteria discussed in this presentation, then bone marrow and, and bone marrow concentrate are not regulated by the FDA as an HCTP product. Additionally, as shown in this uh, response to Lori, there is no plan by the FDA to change their current regulatory status on bone marrow or bone marrow concentrate. Um, unlike uh, some of the other uh, biologic tissues that we're using in regenerative medicine. If you'd like further confirmation that bone marrow concentrate and bone marrow um, aspirate are not regulated by the FDA as an HCTP, uh, here's two references to, to do that. Um, if somebody approaches you with an allograft product with the claim of living cells, um, on the face of it, that violates uh, FDA regs if it's registered only as a Section 361 product. So I've made a, a habit of asking those salespeople and CEOs and company founders with those types of products to submit their product to the FDA for a direct response and to share that with me, um, showing that their allograft product with living stem cells is correctly registered. And to date, I have not had a single company uh, use this avenue to validate their own um, kind of honor system self-designation as a Section 361 product. So um, nobody's really taken the time to, to, to prove up their, their claims 
And until that happens, I think we all have to be very hesitant to believe those claims with those allograft HCTP products. In conclusion, the homologous use of autologous, minimally manipulated, i.e. centrifuged bone marrow that is not combined with other unsafe agents is not regulated by the FDA. And the FDA has indicated no plans to change this 12 plus year old regulatory view in any public document to date. I thank you for your attention and uh, welcome any comments or a discussion on the topic.